we do our best to control ourselves. When we're out of control, things get broken. People get hurt. Whether it's um, out of control in anger or passion or rage or lust, or whether it's abandon and pleasure and bliss and ecstasy, we might not be paying attention to what we're doing and we might accidentally knock someone over or worse. And as soon as those kinds of mistakes happen, there's a recoiling effect that happens because how could following my instincts and allowing pleasure to arise, how could that result in something bad? I'm talking about simply just trying to enjoy playing, just having fun in the moment. And even that, something so innocent and so simple, can lead to such devastating catastrophe and such loss. And the only way that we can resolve that, don't listen to me when I'm saying this, because I'm saying the only way, like obviously it's not the only, there's no only way. Um, it's just, just listen to what I'm, the energy, don't listen to the words so much. But the only way, that we, it's to accept the fact that that's part of the package. If we want to have all the fun in the world, then we're going to also have all of the worst horrible experiences that we can have that feel awful. And it's up to each individual person whether what their tolerance level is for feeling really good and feeling really bad. The spiritual paradigm and the whole spiritual practice and uh, religious movement seeks to transcend or to uh, well, I say control to transcend or move beyond or kind of balance it all out in a way and so so that we feel better and better and better but there's not ups and downs there's not big ups and downs we're not affected by them even if there are big ups and downs well it's okay it's all it's, we're not affected by it we don't want to go on that roller coaster ride and you know that paradigm never made a whole lot of sense to me because we're already on the roller coaster ride. We're already on it. You're, you're not going to get off it. You could change your perspective, sure. Yeah, you could, you could frame it differently. That's fair. Um, and whatever makes you more comfortable, that's... We do seek comfort. But... We're afraid, afraid, afraid of pleasure and rightfully so when it is not guided by controlled, conscious, intentional awareness of what's happening. And it's just a gradual evolutionary process that in the caveman days, it was just really harsh vibes of just like, oh, ah! <laughs> like really harsh vibes. And lots of very in intense, clunky, binary, like, ugh, movements that um, have become smoothed over and refined over the years. And we've gone back and forth and steps forward and steps backwards. And, you know, some people might say we're on the brink of another world war or nuclear, whatever. You know, you, you can get as freaked out about it as you want to. Um, personally, I see no other option than to trust that actually humans are good actually we are fundamentally good that within all of that duality and paradox of the best and the worst of us that there is just an inherent goodness that we call love or whatever you want to call it that is always there it's ever present and kind of just is going to take care of everything and that's that's a relief you know when you hear the religious message like oh well there's god and they're taking care of me and um, it's all good so it it does kind of take the burden off your shoulders individually and at that point you can kind of just go on living living your life which i think for most people great all set done we're you know just tell me a story that feels good and i'm good <laughs> And the thing about that is, is that it, it, it doesn't work in the long term. It's not sustainable, if you want to use the term from ecology. It's not sustainable. Um, religion is not sustainable. None of these structures are sustainable. And 
we just continue to seek the balance, I think is what it is. And so finding what that is now, um, it looks a lot different than it did in the past. And one of the, one of the, uh, not alarming, but one of the slightly concerning movements that I've noticed has to do with allowing for embodiment and allowing for positive experiences to happen. Great, that's necessary. And also pushing away of negative experiences, which is not going to work in whatever way you do that, no matter how you frame it, whether you're pushing away your own negative experiences, whether you're pushing away somebody else's negative experiences, it's, it's only a temporary motion that you can only sustain for so long before you have to give up the fight. You, you know, no one can, you can spend your whole life fighting if you want to, but it's not fun. I mean, it's obviously not fun, right? Like that was perhaps invigorating for some people a long time ago, maybe before the time of guns and laser beams when we had hand-to-hand -hand combat and swords and shields and things like that. I mean, it's not a good time, but it probably was a very um, alert time. And there is a certain adrenaline that can go along with that um, that can give you a really strong sense of self and that is just another way of, you know, arranging things to make it feel okay. Not as bad as it did, but, but it doesn't feel good for all the people who, the families of the people who die, that's no fun. Oh, they, they sacrifice themselves for, for us or for our country. And at the end of the day, it's like, we don't need to play this whole thing of give and take. And, and if we can just recognize that, like once you stop those kinds of outflows of any kind of hatred, anger, essentially negative energy that you're putting out to other people, once you stop doing that, I mean, whatever reverberations are, are going to come back to you. And I don't take anything I'm saying as at face value, because I have no idea what I'm talking about, but some of those reverberations, depending on your life, your karma, those could come back to you for just a moment and then you'll be clean. Or maybe it's years, decades, your whole lifetime of washing yourself clean of all the stuff that you've done in the past. You know, that could be a lifelong process. It's different for everyone. So there's no guarantees that just because you finally stop putting out negative energy that you're suddenly going to feel good. You might not, to be honest with you. Like, we don't know all of what we've done or what has been done to us, but it is not even something that's within our conscious control necessarily. Like energies and patterns play themselves out. We're pawns in the game. We're going along, we go with the flow as best as we can. We try to hop onto the right little spirals whenever we can and maybe find a better pathway to the next, like shoots and ladders. But um, one o'clock. My experience of life, I hesitate to use the word spiritual because before I had a spiritual awakening, I didn't know the word spiritual. And I didn't, as such, when that happened to me, I actually really had no idea what was happening. There was no previous context that I was able to then put that experience into which is a very unusual way as far as I've heard from other people to experience that. Like it's normally we are seekers first and then we eventually give up the search and realize that everything is just this. And that's one way of arriving at it. However, for some people, it's random and spontaneous. Sometimes it happens just when you're a kid or maybe you've had like grad, anyway, who cares? It's, 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 there's a variety of things that can happen. It doesn't matter. It's not the point. It's always, uh, it's always good to take a step back and see what I'm talking about here. There's really no future 
to speak of, right? Planning for the future is just an activity that you can do in your mind that could be engaging or interesting or fun or anxiety inducing or whatever it is for you. But for me, I guess it's an anxiety inducing, but you're not going to be able to plan for or control anything as an individual self. There are statistical averages that say, well, this is what probably will happen most likely. Fair enough. But if you live your life according to statistical averages, well, guess what? You're not living your life. You're taking a back seat to your own existence and allowing something to just play out in front of you that is an imagined reality. Like this is what the average person would experience. And so you just look for experiences that confirm that and hope that nothing crazy happens to you, right? <laughs> well, well thing, crazy things will happen to you regardless, but the, the, what we miss out on is the fact that as an individual self, your creativity is what matters. It's, okay, well, I can't plan for the future, but what I can do is I can make something right now that does not have to be about getting and securing and planning and oh god you know um what am i talking about this is all i don't like this nah <laughs> cancel all that <laughs>